The first thing is unplug it. Don't mess around with the blade on a saw that's plugged in for any reason. Second, get the table down around to enlarge your work area just as much as you can. Next, figure out where on your saw the blade lock is. On a skill worm drive, it's right there. You see that? That black button? You hold pressure on that till it slips into its slot and the blade is restrained. I don't know where yours is, but I know where mine is. So I roll that around until I have that under my thumb. And then you're going to be figuring out whether the bolt that tightens the collars onto the blade is right hand or left hand threads. On a worm drive skill, they're left hand threads. There's a little arrow on there which indicates which way you should be turning that to tighten it up. Can you see that? With the blade locked, you are either going to have a diamond knockout or a 5 8 round arbor. The skill has this diamond knockout. See that knockout? That is exactly the shape that skill saw needs to lock onto the arbor. Now you can put this on a piece of wood, you can span it between pieces of wood or over the end a piece of cinder block if you want and try to knock that out with a punch. You better be careful, you don't want to bend that blade. Here's one reason to carry a Leatherman. You can get a hold of that thing, give it a little twist, you see it start to open up. You're out. You can, you can knock it out, maybe a little quicker. I could have done that a little more gracefully. But as soon as you start beating around on there, you have the chance of de, um, distorting that material in the, in the eye of your saw. That doesn't help a thing. So I like to twist them out with a wrench. Sometimes you can get in there with the same wrench that you use to loosen up your saw nut. Anyhow, twist them out, knock them out, get them out any way you can. Now it's time to install it. So here's a mistake that a rookie will make. He takes the saw, he's got the knockout out, and he thinks, well, that's the printing. Surely the mar people at marketing at Diablo wants all of the identifying characteristics of their saw where everybody can see it. So he takes it and he drops it onto the arbor and he puts a collar on there and he tightens it up. You see what the problem is with that? It's backwards. You see that printed arrow? That's the direction of the saw rotation. In order for that to happen, it's got to turn over. Now it could be that your saw will have this arrow on here, maybe, okay, late model saws do. I think they assume that our population has regressed. But if it doesn't, you still need to realize that your saw is spinning clockwise, looking on the, on the saw, at least a worm drive is. Figure out which direction your saw is spinning. There's only one direction in which a saw will cut and put them together so that the magic will happen. Press it down onto that little arbor. Take the collar, line it up on the arbor. Remember that this, these threads are backwards. Instead of lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, it is righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. Not much of a rhyme there. Reestablish the lock point on the blade lock. and tighten it up. Now here is something important. There's a little sort of a semi-accidental, semi-intentional clutch mechanism here. You don't need to tighten this down like you're tightening the head bolts on your old Chevy. Because if it's just a little bit loose, it will enable that blade to slip just a little bit when it comes into a hard pull. Maybe reducing the kickback. Maybe saving your hand or your leg or your knee. So just because you've got that thing dogged and just because you understand that the direction you pull it is going to tighten it, don't bear down. Just snug it up, call it good. That blade is going to cut like crazy. So this is a used Diablo. This is a used Marathon. I, lo I love them both. They're great blades. I'm not even going to try to tell you which one is better. They're both better. The beautiful thing about a saw with carbide teeth is you knock one off, you keep cutting. You knock two off, you keep cutting. But it's going to start to be a little rough. You're going to notice a little more 
um, rag on the edge of the cuts, you're going to notice a little more noise, a little more howl. You don't have to fight these things very long because relatively speaking, they don't cost much anymore. It's, I guess, sort of the benefits of mechanized production. But there comes a point when your saw just becomes kind of miserable to work with. You can tell if you stop, you pull the guard up and look, you'll be able to get, oh man, I got one, two, three, four, five, six teeth gone. That thing's over. Don't fight it. Now this one, I stopped using or at least pulled out of my saw. It's got a couple teeth that are slightly chipped, but they're all there. I'll hang on to that. It's a plenty good backup replacement, but if I need something nicely cut, I'm gonna put a fresh blade in. So I just somewhat clumsily twisted the knockout out of that Diablo. Let's see how we do if I arrange a situation where I can knock it out. It's exactly the same thing. Irwin has got the knockout sort of nicely delineated on that side. It's a little bit buried with paint on that side. So I'm gonna center it over these little iron spacers. I'm gonna take a punch. I'm gonna put it on there. It's out. Now, if you're not on a job site where you can do that, be careful, you start banging around and you miss it, it doesn't work so good. So, you know, whichever way you want to use, I think Irwin obviously does a nicer job of relieving that knockout than Diablo did. That Diablo thing was hung up a little bit. But in any case, out goes the knockout, onto the saw, tighten it up, not too tight, little safety feature there, and uh, make sure it's spinning the right direction and get back to work. Thanks for watching. <laughs>